Okay, so what I did for the mini kit is I just took a smaller sized blending stump. I forget what these are called. It's a French word, but anyway, blending stump. There's, these are cheap. You can get them at um, um, any arts and crafts store or Walmart and um, any place they have drawing supplies and they're really inexpensive. Like sometimes you can get a pack of them for a dollar. Um, you can also just put a Q-tip in there. That'll work too. I have these two water-soluble pencils. I don't remember the brand. I cut these in half a long time ago, and the other half is actually in my art travel kit. Um, but you could just take an inexpensive colored pencil that you have and cut it in half. Get some kids' mini color pencils. Those will work too. So you have a little bit of color in your kit. Okay, you're going to want an eraser. So again, we're going to get out our X-Acto knife and we're going to just cut the eraser in half. Or smaller, depending on how big of an eraser you want in your kit. There we go. So now the next thing we want is some uh, a journal. So I have a bunch of scrap paper, which I need to do something with. So I'm glad I'm doing this project. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of it that's hopefully a similar size, like maybe these. And I'm gonna make two of these. I actually have two boxes. So, Okay, so we're going to divide this paper in half. That one's kind of wrinkly, but... Okay. Then we're going to fold the pages in half. Crease it with my bone folder. This is nice um, heavyweight drawing paper. This is the drawing paper I use to make my little journals with that I use all the time. Um, I'm going to get some book binding stuff out and we're going to give these a quick stitch. Can we? All right, so I have some book binding thread, and again, I'm gonna to try to link the products I can in the Amazon store, the link for which is in the description below. This is some book, book binding thread from Lineco, I think. Um, and I'm going to thread a really long book binding needle. I'm not gonna measure or pre-cut holes or anything. My glasses on so I can see to thread the needle. There we go, yay. Okay, simple, we're gonna just do simple binding. So I'm gonna tap this on the table so that hopefully these two sides are kind of lined up. And I'm going to poke a hole in the middle. And then I'm gonna, I'm holding all the pages together and I'm gonna, after I poke the hole with the needle, I'm gonna go back in through from the outside to the inside. Cause I want the knot I'm gonna have to tie, I want it to be on the outside. Don't pull it all the way out, you wanna just leave a tail of thread. Then go about an inch up towards the right, poke your needle through all the paper. You of course can do the proper thing and poke your holes with an awl first before you start doing the sewing. I'm just being lazy, to be honest. Okay. Then I'm gonna go up to the top about an inch up from that center hole and poke another hole. There we go. Then go back out the center hole. Pull the threads taut and hopefully you have one on either side of this center thread that goes all the way across from the top to the bottom. 
Um, and if you don't, you can weave it under, but then tie a knot. I usually tie three times. If you're worried about it coming undone, you can put a little dab of glue there. Cut them to about a half an inch, and we've got one bound. Okay, now we're gonna do the other one. And the next thing we're gonna need is to trim these down because they're not gonna fit in the box. So let me get my paper trim trimmer and I'll be right back. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark with a pencil. This should fit in the box this way, but obviously it's not gonna fit in well. So I need to trim some of this off. So I'm gonna just mark it with a pencil. And this is gonna to be tough, and you should really probably use a straight edge and X-Acto knife. Or I should get my big guillotine out, but. So I'm gonna do a few pages, and then I'm gonna open it without moving it too much, and do some more pages. I wanna just show you guys how you can do this using what you have, if you have like limited tools and supplies, but you wanna have something you can take with you, maybe shove in your bag when you're traveling or at the doctor's office or any of those things. Okay, so now look what we did, that was easy. So now, look at that, fits in there really nice, okay? So let me do the other one. They each have, whoops, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crease these with the bone folder so they hopefully stay, oh, closed a little better. Okay. Got a pen, a colored pencil, a graphite pencil, a blending stump, an eraser. But what, what's gonna happen here, what I don't like, is that um, I, I, if it was my kit, would like some protection between the mark making tools and the, and the journal because I don't want any um, random pencil marks usually on my sketchbooks. I mean, if they happen, they happen. But So I'm going to make a little, uh, and, and what I'm gonna make can be used as a little dashboard. I'll explain in just a minute. Okay, so when I draw in my sketchbooks or I'm working on my art journals, if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I usually have a piece of hard plastic between the pages, not only so that I don't get any painty marks on the other page, but to give myself when I'm drawing a hard surface to draw on so that I'm not denting or creasing the other paper that I haven't done anything on yet. So get a piece of plastic. Um, Dollar Tree plastic cutting boards work well. This is actually a piece of plastic from a report folder my husband had that he was throwing away. So we're gonna use that because I he was throwing it out and I went, um, can I have that? <laughs> so we're gonna cut this to be about the size of the journal. And the plastic is thin enough that it cuts with a just standard paper trimmer. Okay, and then when you're drawing, you have this piece of plastic you can stick in here and you can draw and push on here as hard as you want if you're using water soluble materials you can do that you don't have to worry about the water or pen or anything leaking through onto this page because you've got this piece of protection in between by the same token if you have a kit like this you can put your journal in which i should probably trim a little bit because it's a little bit bigger than the other one you can put your dashboard in and then put your pencils in and those pencil tips are, or pen are not going to get onto that paper because there is that piece of plastic in between. Of course, if the pen leaks, that's a whole other ball game. So, um, and that does happen occasionally. 
So I'm gonna trim this, I'm gonna actually trim this one journal a little bit smaller because it is a little bit, it's like a quarter inch too big, so I'll be right back. Okay, you could leave it at that. And you could um, maybe add a few more of your favorite mark making tools, cut something that you have in half, maybe a little piece of charcoal or a water soluble crayon. You could also add a mini watercolor kit and it would fit. And you could add a water brush. Um, I like the Koi ones that um, have the stopper in them for an application like this. They come like this. And they have a medium tip, um, a small tip, and a large tip. Um, and these will fit in with a small watercolor kit. And you can fill the handle up with water, put the stopper in, it's not going to leak. Um, I've taken it on planes and all kinds of things and it doesn't leak. And all of that will fit in your box. And you have an art kit to go. Whether it's a watercolor kit or a sketching kit or a mixed media kit, it doesn't matter. Um, these are mini children's watercolor um, sets. They have eight colors in them originally. Um, what I do is I usually, um, this is actually the first one I've opened that's been broken, but anyway, what I usually do is take the watercolors out. Now you could take the watercolors out and you could glue in little pieces of um, Neo Color 2 crayons or water soluble crayons. You could uh, put in, um, glue in maybe little pieces of, of pastel. Um, but I like to just put watercolor in them. So I take the kids' watercolors out. That one's just coming out. And I wash them out. They pop out really easy. And then I put in um, artist watercolors. Now you could use the watercolors that are in here, but they're kids' watercolors. They're a bit chalky. So what I'm going to do, and I actually have a few of these little mini kits. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash these. I'm going to pull the pans out. The pans. Hello. What are they? Watercolors. Let's pull the watercolors out. Okay, I've shown this before. I have a couple of these mini watercolor kits in my sketching stuff, personally. Um, not only the mini one I take on an airplane, but um, the one I have downstairs. And um, I refilled them with a selection of colors that work for me. Now, you may have a certain palette of colors you'd like that work for you, and you may not have two paints, you may not have expensive two paints, Use what you have. If you are gonna buy something, you don't need to spend a ton of money. Um, these are not expensive watercolor paints. These are Van Gogh and then I have one Grumbacher. None of these are expensive. Um, they're like four or five dollars a tube. And frequently I get them at one of the many arts and crafts stores with a coupon. You can buy one tube with your 40% off coupon. You end up paying like two bucks for it. Um, you can also get Koi to paints. Koi is a good brand, um, in my opinion, a good student brand, and I have good luck with it. So I have um, two yellows, two reds, um, sort of two blues. I have a turquoise and then uh, ultramarine, and then I have a green and a Payne's gray. I really hate mixing green. I'd rather mix purple. So I just put a bit of each color in each well. It's going to dry down and shrink as it's drying, so don't put too much in it, but if you think like it's that right there is kind of full, that's going to dry down. That's about, don't put any more than that. So one of these is a more lemon yellow, one is more of an orange yellow. So you want sort of a, a couple of tones in each color, a cool and a warm. The cool ones will be bluer, the warm ones will be oranger or redder. Again, though, use what works for you. 
I do have this thing that you can put your paint tubes in, big ones and little ones, and then you just do this, and it pushes all the paint down to the end. I forget what the name of it is, but I call it a tube squisher. I don't think that's the proper name. Now this, these palette, these don't hold a lot of paint, but this is just a I'm bored at the doctor's office paint palette. Um, and you don't have a lot of mixing space, but there's a little bit in the lid. So then what you would do is you would just set these like this and you would let them dry. You don't want to close that up until those are completely dry. But once it is dry, they fit right in here. You can close it and you're good to go, right? So I am going to um, actually show you a couple other options if you want to just do watercolor kits. Yeah? So in part two, we're going to come back and I've got... I've got these cute little um, small kits, which are from Daiso. And then I have this one, which my friend Cindy Utter gave me um, a while back. I think it had candy in it originally. I don't remember now. It has a zipper around the edge. So I'm going to show you how you can turn these into watercolor kits too in part two. I also don't need all these travel kits. So all or some of them will be for sale in my Etsy shop, along with these four extra small children's size uh, palettes. Now, I'm not going to fill them with paints, um, but um, I am going to have them in my um, Etsy shop, um, either on their own or with one of these other kits. And um, who knows, with maybe other bits, but I will have them for sale in my Etsy shop. And um, if you're interested, uh, check it out. I'll try to put links in the description below. Um, at the time of filming this, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be in the shop and how much it's going to be, but check it out. And by the time, hopefully, I edit this and get it loaded to YouTube, I'll have an idea. Um, anyway, that's it for the moment. Watch out for part two on how to make a custom small uh, travel art kit for yourself that fits in your handbag, your backpack, your pocket, whatever. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And the most important thing is go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.